Science is boring. But unfortunately, you have to learn the basics before you can understand these complex things and how You talk about science being fun. It is How can it be fun if all you do is make them memorize the basics? You see, you know that class discussion is fun on any level of education. But if you, if you aren't educated in the topic, what kind of discussion are you having? How educated are they going to be? They're going to be aware and they're all going to be thinking. It's in their mind. ideas they already have. Should the latter theory be taught in science class or in philosophy class? If a majority of students, a majority of professors believe the flat earth theory, I'd be teaching it like I taught evolution, wow. and I wouldn't believe it then either. But until the evolution wow. theory finally crumbles, it should be taught in the classroom. Now, I get in trouble with some of my creationist friends because I'm against the SAT 9 Christian school version of the SAT that only has a creationist bent. If creation believing students want to talk intelligently with their with their evolution believing <laughs> friends, they, they should understand evolution. You are, and I will say this, you are not scientifically literate in today's world if you do not understand the rudiments of the evolutionary theory. As of 500 years ago, if you did not understand geocentrism or the flat earth, you would be scientifically illiterate. You must be informed in order to under, in order to be able to converse intelligently, in order to be able to learn about it. It behooves me to understand evolution terrifically well. I like your argument. Which discipline of science is it that agrees with you? On what? On the creationism side. <laughs> Which discipline? All creationist scientists in all those disciplines, sir. Uh, we are a minority, true, but but to say that this is a matter of creationism versus science, I have to take personal offense because I am trained in science and I'm a teacher. And yet, I, I break your definition of scientist by being a creationist. The, 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 the whole controversy is between the scientific community and the non-scientific community. You're calling me non-scientific. Did you just do that? I'm calling you a very, very small minority. Yes, and that's okay. Is it a non-scientific minority? And, and always, in the past. Am I a non-scientific minority? When Einstein came out with the theory of relativity, Am I a non-scientific minority? <laughs> Am I a non-scientific minority? I don't know what you mean by non You said it. I'm asking you. You said it. I don't. Am I a non-scientific minority? Yes. I'm a minority, of course, but am I non-scientific? I would say yes. You believe so. I'm glad you used that word. You are entitled to your opinion, sir. I have four college degrees. Uh, I'm and not untrained no in science. Hmm? You perform no research. No, I'm not a researcher. I am an educator. That's true. But does that mean that I am not a scientific person? It means you're not a scientist. I, there are lots you don't of believe that a student in a classroom is a scientist who is, for the first time, dissecting a frog? They are trained, but they are not scientists. You do not believe that person is a scientist. We have a very different view of education of children and a very different view of how much credence we lend them as thinkers. So if I get a degree in pre-med, I'm a doctor? No, there's a level of training that's required to take a title. There's there are people there's without degrees who have tremendous bodies of knowledge. Darwin himself never had a science degree. <laughs> But he was a practicing scientist. Yes, yes, yes. He was, he was, he was working in the field, of course. And I don't think he needed to have a science degree. A child learning the basics. I personally do not consider a scientist. They're learning about science. They could be a scientist one day. But so what is a scientist? Someone who works as a scientist for a living? Is that the only qualification? I would like to. Yeah. A scientist is not someone who does science. If I read an article written by a scientist. I'm assuming that that person has a PhD in a scientific field, that that person is performing some sort of research that is related to that article. Um, so merely a degree makes you a scientist in, in a and field. And doing research. And doing research. So if you are doing research, those are the only people that you would consider scientists. Professional scientists, yes. Okay, now does that mean, because I do not do research, am I a non-scientific person? You're a non-professional scientist. A non-professional scientist. Okay, well I thank you for the credence. Uh, because I do feel that I understand <coughs> science in a different understanding than you have, of course. But I should imagine you would respect uh, my veracity as a person of science as much as I respect yours and yours, sir. Why are you opposed to doing it the way it's always been done? Whoa, 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 whoa. Progress is never made that way, sir. <laughs> That's why. In the past, Albert Einstein had to convince the scientific community 
He didn't come out and say, I believe that the theory of relativity should be taught in schools because I believe it, and I'm a small minority, and my, my status as a scientist and a small minority means that, that my theory should be, be caught, or my hypothesis at the time, should be taught in schools. Why not take this breadth of knowledge that you have, convince the scientific community, and then get it get it taught worldwide? What do you think? Why I'm doing that now. Now. I am doing that now. If they agreed with you. And I bet you that if you called any of those first authors, that they would not agree with you. Well, they wouldn't agree with uh, my interpretation of the data. No, but, but they're the ones actually doing the research, but you know better. Abby, you're taking other people's research to help you with your research. It's the Absolutely. Thing. But, but no, it's like not. She's curing a disease. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't. So, what we do. Good. So, say I publish something that uh, moves the field forward, then how? How other people uh, return the favor as to putting moving the field forward? They cite your paper. Now um, the problem is what happens a lot with creationist uh, presentations is that those scientists not only don't know that creationists are saying this evidence supports uh, creation when they most certainly do not agree with that, um, and they aren't. So if another real good controversy is uh, what role dendritic cells play in HIV evolution, um, in uh, transmission. We fight about it in the literature. We fight with each other in the literature, to each other's faces, saying, this guy is totally wrong, complete joke. Um, but but what, is that person a scientist, even though you disagree with that person? Well, absolutely, yes, okay. he's published. Certified published. She will go on. She will go on in research curing cancer, but yet he's not. We have some respect for the people who are up here. Even though somebody disagrees with that person, you would still call them a scientist because they more agree with what you're saying. What I'm saying is, why can't Dr. Jackson be be a scientist even though he holds a, a different opinion than, than the one that you share? I mean, because that it's the same situation. Is it not? He's not a patient. 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 He's not a um, people who can repair airlines that people fly on every Could day. someone so be right, uh, who is not fitting your definition of a scientist, about a scientific matter, and someone who does fit your definition of a scientist, be wrong? Absolutely. But the person who is wrong can't just go to a school board and declare that everyone should, should teach what he believes. What that person needs to do is get involved in the scientific community and get them on their side. I personally am part of a minority right now because those little modifications I was talking about with histones, some people don't really think those are important or whether they even exist. I'm not going to the Oklahoma State Legislature to demand that, that's, that this particular epigenetic modification is taught in basic developmental biology sections. I'm doing research in my lab, and if I get proven wrong by my own research, I get proven wrong. But if I'm proven right, bam, I get the nature paper. So the whole thing is, is like science is changing all the time. And if you prove somebody wrong, if you prove somebody wrong who's bigger than you on the food chain, you've got it made. If we are going to talk about schools and textbooks then, which is not what the topic was supposed to be tonight, I would not insist on having creation put into the textbooks. If a teacher wishes to add it to their curriculum, I think they should have the freedom to do that, especially if the school board likes the idea and the students and the families are all for it. But I think every biology textbook in this country ought to have documented uh, documented errors taken out of the books. And if you took everything out of the book that was given as proof of evolution, all of the embryos and the moths and the horses and things like that, uh, then, then I'd be happy because there wouldn't be anything in the little chapter on evidence for evolution. Now, there's some of the new stuff that is being found that hasn't been disproved yet. 
I think your Irv stuff ought to go in the textbook until they find out there's a problem with that. But there's so many problems. So many. If you're talking about textbooks, the textbooks and just take out the, the, the lies. And be a teeny tiny section when there's no one at the Health Science Center that can do research that doesn't involve evolution. Like, you don't understand, like, how much we 